the adventurer, which is what you are, it seems yeah. to me, caught up in all the, the feeling I'm putting to get together something on sort of a blank slate. So you started theater Calgary. Mm. How do you start a theater? Well, this is um, luck. Luck. You, it's like um, it's like when kids audition for me. I used to ask them if they were lucky people, uh, because I believe that actors and theatre people have to have luck. You have to genuinely be lucky, um, or think that you do, or something. It was luck. Uh, I was at Stratford. We had played at Expo in '67, and I was back home in Toronto at 114 Cumberland Street in Yorkville, and I was having breakfast with um, Eric Donkin, uh, the actor, and uh, we were in my apartment, and I got a telegram. I got a telegram from a company called Mac 14, which was a semi-amateur company in Calgary, which said, unfortunately, we cannot get Tom Kneebone, would you play <laughs> the lead in Charlie's Hand? And I thought, you can't get Tom Kneebone, so you're asking me, you're letting me... No, of course I'm not going to do that. That's insulting. You know, you'd just come back from Expo, so you thought you were somebody. And it was Eric who said, what are you doing for those six weeks? And I said, well, I'm not doing anything, really. He said, well, for God's sake, say yes. Of course, you'll go out there and do your night. Have a lot of fun. So I went out to Calgary. I played Lord Fancourt Babbley for their uh, Charlie's Zand, and it was sort of fun. Uh, during that time, they were talking about ca the fact that Calgary was the, the last major city of over half a million, not to have a theatre, not to have a, uh, a professional theatre. Vancouver had, Edmonton had, uh, Winnipeg and Halifax, and things were happening all over the place. Um, and they were talking about maybe, maybe we should go professional. And so I started talking. I'm an enthusiast, you know. Yeah, that'd be great. We could be this, 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 this. And uh, at the end of the six weeks, the guy who was the chairman of the board of Mac 14, said, well, would you be interested, perhaps, in sort of trying to help set it up, you know? And I said, yes, I'll set it up. I'll, I'll do it. Um, I've never done anything like this before. But it was exciting. It was an adventure. And so I got back to Stratford for the uh, uh, 68 season. And uh, I talked to everybody. I talked to everybody. Bill Wiley, who was then the general manager, who used to say, oh, this place would run really well if we didn't have to use actors. So I thought, oh, he'll be an interesting person to talk to. Like, how does he run it? Uh, and I just I learned everything I could about running a theater. And I was at Stratford, so I had lots of chums who were in the, you know, the bottom dressing rooms with me, but doing, doing interesting work. But uh, we weren't playing leads like Bill and you know, Leo Chichery and Alice Thomas and people. Uh, but we were playing sort of the support parts. So I got them all to come out to Calgary for a hundred bucks a week, you know, Kenny Welsh and Eric Donkin and my, my chums, you know, Jimmy Blendick, Mary Hitch, they all came out and would play for us for a hundred bucks a week. That's how I started Theatre Calgary. And um, also, but, 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 but how do you start the theatre? Do you have a meeting? Do you say well, they, there's was, a building or do you need the money first or do you need the talent first? We have the idea first. That's where you start. And then I wanted to know how to do it. And then we had a basis. There was this semi-amateur company, Mac 14, which had a warehouse where they built some of their sets and things. So there was a basis, and there was a, there was a place to play, the Allied right. Arts Center in Calgary, which was a converted tractor warehouse. So it had certain things in place that I could use. I didn't like the name Mac 14. It sounded like a kind of um, Scottish secret agent. I thought it had, some, had to have a name which identified the place that it belonged to. This was, this was a theater for Calgary. It wasn't a theater for anywhere else, it was Calgary. So I, I did a subscription. I paid for a subscription to the uh, uh, Calgary Herald, which arrived you know, four days late on my dressing room table at Stratford all through the summer. And during, well, I was not on as whatever, you know, Oberon or something, I was reading the Calgary Herald. So by the time I got out there, I knew every councillor's name. I knew everything that they supported. I knew all the districts in the city. So anybody coming up to me, you know, saying, oh, well, you guys from the East, I'd go, uh, excuse me, uh, what about the, you know, the sewer problem that you're having down in Bowness? And they'd go, well, how do you know about that? And I said, well, I've done my homework. 
And so I went in knowing about the city and, and loving the idea of the city. Calgary, don't forget, is a romantic city. It's one of our few romantic cities. It, it, it has a, a stampede, for God's sake, it has sort of myths in Calgary. I mean, unfortunately, they, there's a tendency to sort of turn the myth into money or, you know, it's, it's become a little commercial, the whole thing, but there is a myth behind this of, of the ranchers all those kind of things, and the foothills. So it was an exciting place to be. When we started Theatre Calgary, it's, the, the repertoire in the first season, if I can remember correctly, was that it started off with The Odd Couple by Neil Simon. It was Kenny Welsh and Eric Donkin playing. It was wonderful, wonderful acting we had on the stage. The second thing, second piece that we did at Theatre Calgary was a modern dress version of Ben Johnson's The Alchemist with music by the Fifth Dimension, <laughs> remember them? Oh. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. Jimmy Blendick as Sir Epicure Mammon doing, and, and Anne Anglin as Dol, whatever her name is, not Dol Tershi, but something like that. Um, it, it, it was an explosive thing to hear this on the stage. And then we did Gaslight, and Bill Hutt came out and directed it to help us, you know, because everybody, I'd made such a fuss at Stratford about starting Theatre Calgary that everybody was interested, uh, the Stratford Company, and they helped. Uh, so we had a, a, our, our first season went all over the place. We, we did James Rainey's very first play. He'd had other plays done, uh, but his very first play was one called The Three Desks. It's a lovely play set in the English department at the University of Manitoba. And because it isn't necessarily one of his poetic pieces, he kind of dismissed it a little bit, mm -hmm. I think. But it was a lovely play for us. Wow. So we were able to to at least sort of lock into the idea that there are writers involved in the theatre. Though I've never been, I've been interested in actors' theatres, not writers' theatres. And I, I, I wanted the acting. I wanted the, what interested me was how the, how the ideas are delivered to an audience, not necessarily what the idea was. That, that was secondary for me. It was the process that, that intrigued me, which is why I always had companies of actors, always had ensembles, even at Theatre Calgary. Um, Neil Monroe came out in the very beginning of Theatre Calgary and stayed for two years as a member of this little six-person ensemble, for instance. Um, so, 60s and 70s, the government. how much of your, yes, the Canada Council and the various councils, how much of the total, uh, say, Theatre Calgary's budget would be tickets, how much would be, very ballpark, very, how much would yes. be government funding? Well, uh, I think the Cal Theatre Calgary budget in my first year, this is for um, seven plays including a musical, uh, was about 130,000. And I know that I got either 30 or 35 from Gene Roberts, so that meant I had to find 95. I got 2,000 from the Alberta government, I remember that because they made a big fuss about how generous they were. And uh, <laughs> I, got, um, I got something from the city but I somehow had to raise about 90,000. And uh, we must have, somehow, mm -hmm. fundraising and tickets right. got that money. We lost money in the first year at Theatre Calgary, but um, I, brought <clears throat> I brought out Bill Webster from Stratford to be our production stage manager uh, for the la my last two years, the three years, and he got us into the black. He was very clever. He knew how to manipulate the money behind the scenes. Wow. Um, so you lear I learned on the spot, but I was lucky because I had a vision for the place. It wasn't just going, oh, I don't know what to do. I've got this, this, these choices. I, I wanted this kind of thing.